Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this artwork of Hansun Miku. So we're starting off really uh, simple with the uh, basic head. I, I went for more of a slightly different look to the head this time, and by slightly I mean you probably won't be able to tell the difference between this and my normal artworks, um, if I'm being 100% honest. I, I'm going for uh, kind of a... Um, a very uh, mystical or like very pretty looking artwork this time. Hansun Miku doesn't always wear like a schoolgirl uniform, but I did it this time. Uh, and those with uh, more observant eyes may also notice I gave uh, Miku uh, a larger chest, which some people, including myself, do that, even if it's not fully canon. Um, it's just one of those things that sometimes you do it and. Uh, uh, you just had to deal with the fallout of it later. But I tend, uh, I kind of had this idea in mind while looking at this artwork, and it, it definitely came a lot easier to me than they usually do. Um, you'll, you'll also notice I didn't do very many guides this time, so the, the quality of it was a little bit iffy, but it wasn't terrible. We have a lot of flow and movement to, like, the tie and the uh, plated part of the skirt, I couldn't quite figure out what I wanted to do with the hands at first, but I ended up deciding I wanted to uh, have both hands visible. Also, uh, the the original design for the mouth was way different than the finished product. I went for more of a cutesier look, and I ended up changing that later down the line because I thought it just kind of looked odd. The, the eyes definitely were a bit much in the beginning. So we have basically an idea going right now. I uh, adjusted the composition a bit to look a bit uh, more tight in the composition. Um, you, you'll see me do that many times in my artwork. I start with a, a basic size canvas, then I'll adjust the canvas size to fit the character, not so much to fit the uh, the original. I don't adjust the character to fit the uh, composition. Sometimes I fit the composition to the character. I think that is a really good thing to do because you can have an amazing um, pose, but you have to fit the, the pose in the composition. So sometimes it's good to take the canvas and make it fit the character. That, that's a good way to cheat. Um, it, sadly, you can't do that with traditional artwork unless you're willing to like cut and crop the page. But I know a lot of artists do, and I think that's very much... Um, something to keep in mind if you're doing traditional artwork that you can get like a, a paper cutter and crop it if you need to. Just uh, keep in mind that it's especially relevant when it comes to uh, traditional art that you only get one shot. So plan it out by uh, maybe cutting out some black uh, canvas paper and planning out the composition in advance. That'll definitely help you if you're doing it traditionally. Digitally, we can do it easy. It's a whole lot easier, but traditional, that's my advice to you. I definitely had a whole lot of fun with the hair this time, even though I, I may have went overboard on it, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, but we we have a solid foundation with uh, everything here. The the flow and the movement is really nice. Um, originally, when I did the uh, the pin the twin tails, um, I felt they they just looked off. They were very awkward and like placed oddly on the head. They didn't have a fun movement to it. As you can see for the side bangs, I kind of made the hair swing out a bit more to add more motion to follow the gravity of the uh, tie, which definitely added to the composition. If I'm, if I, uh, just my thoughts. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting kind of tongue-tied. Um, as you might have noticed, I'm still sick. Um, I'm definitely feeling a little bit better. My voice is still hoarse, and I'm still coughing every now and then, but I think I'm pretty much over my sickness. So, yay! So, I'm doing a little bit of adjustment, cropping it a bit more, um, using the liquify tool to make my life a whole lot easier. Um, it's funny, at this current point in time, I wasn't sure if I wanted to be Hansun Miku, or uh, Sabura the Duck from um, from Hollow Alive, but I ended up settling on um, specifically Hansun Miku just because I'm like I know Hansun Miku doesn't do well on my Twitter account, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to draw her. Basically, this entire time I was fighting the idea of should I make it Saburu or uh, 
or should I make a Hansu Miku? And I think I ended up deciding to go with Miku, and I made it an artwork for my uh, friend Knack, who is a big Vocaloid fan. And I'm a big Vocaloid fan too, but she adores it. She um she has her own Vocaloid OC, which she commissioned me to draw for her. So I really need to finish that. But it's one of those things that I, as I was making this, it was a little bit for me, and I thought I would give it to her to uh, own as a gift. So in a way, I got an excuse to draw Hansun Miku while at the same time giving something to a friend who I cherish very dearly. So I wanted to go all out to make it special for her. There's a big jump in time here because I, I recorded off camera kind of refining the sketch a bit more. So um, you may notice I sped up the line art process way faster than I usually do. And that was on purpose. I feel um, line art takes me a very long time and it's kind of difficult to watch the whole way through. So uh, the line art is really sped up this time and I apologize in advance for that. But yeah, uh, I went for very thickness on the lines. I went for kind of a mix of thin and thick lines where the uh, lines intersect. And that definitely adds a level of depth that I think looks amazing in this artwork. I'm like, the line art looks so good, but the rendering, I felt like I ruined it. And it's, it's kind of sad, but for the most part, it turned out all right. So you can see all the all the variations in the line thickness, and it's just so so clean looking. And man, I love lines. Um, I used uh, holding shift while on the pen tool to make straight lines for the uh, the tie and the twin tails, and I think that's uh, a good way to do it without having to uh, use the line tool in Clip Studio Paint because I don't like using the line tool. Um, I'll use the shape tool for things like circles and squares and polygons, but I do prefer to hold shift to uh, make straight lines. So now we're getting all the lines going. We're we're starting to move to the body now. Um, I, I refined the um, the fingers a bit, and we're starting to get the little details. We're gonna blur this part of the the twin tail. It's why it's on a separate folder. I have a separate folder just for blurring. So we're still adding depth everywhere. That's super important. Um, I'm leaving a gap here because there's gonna be a black gradient that comes out. Um, we're starting to add the base colors now, planning everything out and making it look nice and pretty. Um, I ended up starting off too bright, so I had to like adjust the hue and saturation to get the correct color of blue that I wanted. And usually Hansun Miku's um, hair is a bit more on the on the teal or uh, sea foam, maybe even slightly more green side of uh, color. But I went for a baby blue this time because I want it to look like she's underwater a bit. And that was definitely uh, the, the purpose of this artwork. I, I went for gray on the, um, on the uh, white part of the clothes itself because I wanted to add highlights that are pure white. So that's the planning phase. Now we're getting into the rendering. Little adjustments here and there to kind of make it look good, and now we're starting the rendering. I feel personally I botched the rendering on this particular artwork, but, you know, they can't all be winners. Sometimes you uh, you don't have a good reference to help guide you, and it can happen. Um, over time, I've definitely gotten better at rendering without a guide, but I feel like my artwork really uh, shines whenever I have a good reference. So in this particular artwork, it may not have been perfect, but... I am learning and it's getting better. Definitely on a study arc at the moment. Um, we're adding some basic shading to the uh, breast, little areas. I have a triangle brush that I use for uh, particular um, wrinkles in the in the uh, clothes, and that is basically the vibe we're going with. So as you can see, we added a multiply layer over everything to kind of make it darker and uh, make it feel like she's like in the depths, if that makes sense. We're adding a, a very harsh uh, multiply layer and we're using the triangle brush to erase pieces of it, then um, using the airbrush as an eraser to kind of make a gradient out of it. Then we're locking transparency and we're making it darker along with the light touches. That's called the terminator line and it appears in a lot of things in art. 
So now we're starting to get to where the render is almost complete. If you'll notice, there's still a bit of time left in the video, and that's because I do a lot in the processing this time. I add a lot of effects. Here's the tonal curve. We're basically moving to the point where we're going to start working on the eye soon. So my first pass at the eye, I actually put it on the wrong layer, which screwed everything up and I had to start all over again, which is probably a good thing because the way I was doing the eye for a moment there looked terrible. I was very displeased with it. But the, the finished product looks a little bit better. Now we're adding the ad glow to kind of make the layer shine a bit and kind of plan out the whole lighting here. Adjusted the uh, face composition a little, well not composition, the face structure a little bit, adding Miku's famous O1, little details to the hair, kind of some shine, some add glow. I accidentally affected the wrong layer and the, and the blush and the face just did weird things. I had a kind of like some musical notes, like glowing, almost guiding the eye back to the face with the hair. There we go, add the blur. Little adjustments. We're approaching the end now. We're adding just little things, little details here and there to kind of make the artwork pop a bit. Some multiply to kind of focus the everything a bit. Some uh, reflection of the water in the hair. Kind of gradient, like erasing a little bit, adding an ad glow, hard light, blurring it. Adjusting little things, fixing the mouth to look a little bit better in my opinion. There we go, some like bubbles. Whole lot of effects in this one. Added some chromatic abrasion and using the liquify tool to make it a little more extreme. And pretty much we are done here. One final tonal curve to kind of glue all the colors together. And there we go. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps me out a whole lot. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.